so it's Thursday, May 25th, and I am about to head to the cathedral to go get my pilgrimage passport and officially start my Camino. Um, I am tired. I'm still, still not quite on schedule here. Um, and again, partly because the last few days, if when I would get up, I would be tired, and so I'd just go back to sleep. And so I'm, I'm tired this morning, and I didn't sleep very well last night. This bed is not comfortable, and the sound of the jackhammering was very disruptive. But I'm going to start anyway. The best way to get on schedule is to just be on schedule and just deal with the tiredness. I am sure by the time I'm done today, I'll be hopefully tired enough to actually get some sleep. So yeah, I'm, I'm headed out. Uh, I was gonna step, stop back here and get my bag and talk myself out of a nap <laughs> before I continue on my journey. Um, I got my hair braided. Is it terrible? Yes. Did did I do it wrong? Yes. Especially since I did both sides or either side completely differently. Uh, did it take me a long time? Yes. But hopefully by the end of this, I'll be a lot better at it and I'll figure out how to do it right on both sides. <laughs> um, if anybody has any tips, that would be really helpful. But my hair is out of my face. It's off my neck. And it's not pulling from a ponytail and that those are the things that are important to me. Does it look dumb? Yeah. Do I care? No, not really. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, day one, here I go. Bien Camino. Um, the, the doors don't actually open until 9 a.m., which is in about 15 minutes. So I have to wait. Uh, wait about 15 minutes in order to go get my passport so I'm just kind of waiting I, I um, am very encouraged that there are quite a few pilgrims already sort of in line waiting to get their passport as well um, so that's kind of nice that I, I'm not going to be alone I'm not the only one doing this uh, they'll probably do the full stages and I'm not intending to, at least not right now. I don't know, maybe they, the guidebook says to estimate about uh, eight hours uh, total walking the first day. Um, and uh, if I had known that the cathedral didn't open till nine, I probably would have stopped by yesterday, especially since I was like right here yesterday. I got my passport, but it's kind of nice to actually like have my official start be here at the cathedral, and um, you know it'll it'll just mean I'm a, starting a little later, but that's okay. And um, I do expect to stop and have lunch or something along the way, a cup of coffee. I haven't had a coffee yet this morning. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm here just waiting. Um, I was going to show you my, the first way marker. And you can see the, the arrows over uh, on the walkway there, painted on the side. Um, every time I tried to go around this guy, he kept backing up. Um, the blue one is the coastal route, which is the route that I'm going to be taking, and the yellow route is, or the yellow arrow is the, um, the central route, which is the, the more common one. But it's actually the blue route that goes past my hotel, luckily. So, um, so yeah, I'm just chilling, waiting for the cathedral to open, get my passport, and then I'll head back to my hotel room. 
Uh, the roof right here is, is blocking the view, but right behind that roof is the Kalem Caves that I was at for the wine tour last night. So, uh, to kind of show you how close I really was to, to, getting, to coming to the cathedral, you can see the gondolas in the... Not gondolas, the... I don't remember what those boats are called. But you see those cool boats in, in the river. <laughs> Is it cool? I don't know. But anyway, here's a view from up, up the top of the cathedral. Just kind of as I'm sitting waiting for it to open. All the crowds starting to gather, waiting for the cathedral to open so we can all get our passport and get going. I did not bring uh, hiking poles. Um, I do intend to try to find a walking stick along the route uh, rather than bringing hiking poles. I would have had to check hiking poles on the airplane anyway. And they would have just been a pain, especially once I get into India. So I'm just going to try to find out a hiking stick. One of the girls that I watched on the YouTubes do the Camino, that's what she always does, is she just finds a stick along the way. Oftentimes people will leave them at the albergues, and so she can just kind of pick one up uh, somewhere along the way. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Find it find a walking stick that I can use on my journey. Officially a pilgrim. I got my pilgrim's passport. Um, one of the rules of the Camino is that you have to get a stamp every day um, until you get a hundred kilometers away from the cathedral Compostela in Spain, and then you have to get two stamps a day. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I need to make sure I get. Oh, I probably should have got him to stamp it. Yeah, I'll go have to go back and get him to stamp it. Oh no, it's already stamped. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, anyway, um, I'm I'm gonna head off on the trail back to my hotel room and pick up my bag and be off for real. So there's our way marker in the uh, pathway. So I just gotta keep my eyes open for the way markers. There's another one right there. You can see it. There. I'll just keep headed down and following the path. Painted on the building. The path goes this way. Sometimes the way markers are a little bit like a Where's Waldo game, but if you look, they are there. So here's an arrow showing me I'm on the right route. Here's several arrows, or a couple arrows right in a row. There's one, and then there's one up here on this post right here. Just keep trekking. I'm at this corner of this building. A couple other pellegrinos up ahead of me, uh, which is, you know, comforting that I'm on the right path, although I have seen them the way marker, so I know I am. I'm gonna try to follow them, although they're going much faster than I am. A marker here up on this pipe. 
There are a couple organizations that maintain these way markers. Via Lusitano, I think, is the main one, but um, I'm very grateful for them. I'm very thankful that they, they have people that are out here making sure that we're all on the right path and we're safe and we're not lost in a foreign country. I uh, missed a turn a little ways back and got one street off the route, but luckily for me, for the with the advent of modern technology, even though I didn't know where I was, Google did, and I was able to just Google where I'm supposed to be and get back on track really easily. I, I really was only like one block off. Um, so now I'm back on track, but I thought I would show you this cathedral with all this amazing blue and white tile and this incredible bell tower uh, like raised tiles that's like textured it's so cool Grum's headed back the other direction headed back to Porto, but uh, it is sort of the customary greeting when you encounter other Pellegrinos that you always acknowledge each other by saying Bien Camino. So it's kind of kind of a neat little uh, micro culture here, this Pellegrino culture. Ooh, look, Burger King, just what I need. Uh, it's noon, and uh, so I just thought I would take a little break. Uh, I stopped at the grocery store and got uh, a big bottle of water. I already ran out of the water I brought with me, um, and, I, and, and an orange. I'm not super hungry, but uh, an orange is nice and refreshing, and uh, I always get a bottle of water and some Trident. And, and it was only like a dollar, well, 150 euro. I don't know how they say it in decimals. So I just stopped at this, sat on these stairs of this apartment building because it's in the shade. I couldn't find a bench. And I'm just eating my orange. Um, so far today, I've walked uh, almost 14,000 steps. Um, for me, 2,500 steps is about a mile, uh, so 10,000 steps is about four miles. So I've gone just a little over five miles so far. Um, I still have, you know, if I were to go the full stage, I still have almost 10 miles to go. I'd, I'd really only be about a third of the way. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to attempt to try to even push it to that that far today um, I I'm not really feeling you know super tired my muscles aren't bad I'm, I'm handling the the hike pretty well uh, other than my toes I can feel it in my toes a little bit and um, a few months ago um, I learned that I was I was walking wrong not wrong I don't like that word uh, there, I was walking inefficiently. There is a more efficient way to walk. And since I've been trying to walk this, this other way, um, I, I feel it more in my toes. And so I'm sure some of that is, is just that. Um, and also all the uphill climb. It, it's been a fairly steady uphill pretty much the entire way. Not like real steep, but just a, a, a gradual incline um, for pretty much the entire time I've been walking. Um, so yeah, that's all. I uh, just was gonna stop and take a break and post an update and, and then I will head back out and keep on walking. I've made it to the albergue. 
and I arrived here um, about an hour and a half before they actually opened. Um, but they still let me come in and hang out in the gardens with them. Uh, they allowed me to help them fold the laundry and, and then they basically force fed me food. Um, made me have uh, rice and french fries, <laughs> which was actually surprisingly good. Um, and they have just been absolutely uh, wonderful and, and very, very welcoming with me and uh, excellent conversation. They're from, some are from Spain, some are from France, the guy is from India. Um, and so we talked about learning different languages and uh, similarities in culture and how we're all all connected, how we're all one, a lot of philosophical, spiritual conversations. Um, the guy from India is a self-declared Hindu monk, so he is vegan and really only has like one pair of clothes um, and uh, it was a very very simple life um, but used to be a psychology professor in Florida um, and so we had just some really amazing conversations and then I got my first stamp in my passport but <laughs> the lady uh, sat and, and drew a little picture in, in the passport. Along with the stamp. And I just think that's so wonderful. This has been such a great experience already. Um, this particular albergue, they oftentimes have like a communal dinner where everybody, everybody that's uh, here stays and eats and commune, or communes with one another and uh, it's it's been just really rewarding to to speak to people from all over the world and have all these different perspectives and backgrounds and yet we're all here together, we're all doing the same thing and uh, a lot of us have a lot of similar ideas about life and and how to live and how the the world that we were raised in is is not satisfying and not fulfilling and even though these people have very little it, it a lot it's largely by choice that they they recognize that it's the simple things in life that that really make you happy and you know they've been so much more generous to me and accommodating than a lot of people that have a lot and so um, it's really just been uh, a phenomenal experience to be here I did because I was the first one here I was able to get like the corner bottom bunk so I don't have anybody or I don't have to sleep upstairs above ah, no I don't know you're fine <laughs> Um, but anyway, that, that's all. I was just going to give an update, tell you how, how my journey has been so far. Um, I was kind of trying to wait till some of the people left to, to actually show you the albergue. So I don't, I don't know how much they would love being in my videos, but, uh, I'll try to like, just not get their faces so that you can kind of see where I'm staying. But, uh, and uh, <clears throat> you can also rent one of the tents outside if you wanted to stay outside it was actually more expensive to stay in the tent by yourself than to stay in the bunks here in inside um, and these are 
the bed I think is more comfortable than the bed I slept on last night. And yeah, it's weird that I'm sleeping in this like dorm, not even a dorm, it's you know, this communal sleeping space and there's people next to me and it's, you know, co-ed and you know, the guy in the bunk now, the person in the bunk next to me is a guy. Um, but it's, it's, I'm kind of surprised by how many like actual women are on the Camino. I've actually seen far more women on the Camino than I have, on, have men. Um, but yeah, anyway, this, I'm, I'm here, I'm safe, I'm happy. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, this has been a very, very rewarding experience already and it's only day one. Um, I'm, I'm very glad that I chose to come here and to stop and, and rest and, um, you know, sometimes we make these decisions because, you know, we're, we're led to here to places and I, I'm, I'm very certain that I was supposed to come to this albergue, this meeting these people and having this experience is, it was what I was supposed to do. So, um, anyway, this has been uh, a, a fantastic experience and I will now try to go figure out the whole showering and washing my clothes situation. Uh, they do have a clothes clothesline out back so I can wash my clothes and, and line dry them. Um, so yeah, anyway, day one. I got my Camino shell. So I have my official shell and it is a real scallops shell. Uh, scallops are uh, native to the area in Galicia, Spain that I'll be going to. So it's like the, it's the symbol. I don't know if you've noticed all of the, or a lot of the way markers have a, 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 sh a scallop shell. That's it's the symbol of the Camino. So anyway, I got mine. I could hang it on my bag like everyone else. Very excited. So it's just like me to get a sunburn on day one, <clears throat> but the the women that run the albergue uh, they don't they don't speak any English, but they dragged me over to the sink and ripped up one of their towels and covered it in vinegar and clipped it to my arms to kind of absorb the heat and uh, <laughs> it's just, it just continues to be an, an amazing experience here. Uh, my end of day stats are I have 19,000 steps on my Fitbit. Um, breakfast, I'm not exactly sure how much it cost because I didn't write it down but it was less than five dollars for a cup of coffee and a croissant. It was probably more like two. Uh, no, two euro, not dollars. I got yelled at for that. <laughs> uh, two euros. And then lunch, I had water and an orange and uh, gum, which was only a, like a, a little under two euros. And then when I got here, they they fed me rice and french fries. I did donate extra to the albergue as a result, but... Um, and then the, the accommodations were only 10 euros, so... Um, if I hadn't donated, it would have been, you know, a, a 14 euro day. <laughs> um, so, uh, my budget is doing well, um, my feet are doing well. I got some advice from uh, the guy in the bunk next to me who has finished his Camino and is actually headed back to Lisboa um, about uh, making sure I invert my legs at the end of each night to get the blood flowing and um, to put on uh, a couple different types of creams on your muscles to help help with the soreness. 
Um, but, but yeah, everybody here has been super nice and super kind and everyone looks out for everyone. And um, it's like almost eight o'clock and I'm just trying to bide my time until I can go to bed because I'm, I'm quite tired. Although I'm not physically, uh, uh, you know, sore in any way. I don't, I don't really even feel that like I, I did very much. Um, but I'm, I'm sure I will as, I, as the weeks progress, but yeah, anyway, that's, that's my update for today. I'll try to get these posted as soon as I can.